Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, it has been a surprising week in the world of Diablo 4. Pleasantly surprising, but surprising nonetheless. And why is this happening? Well, because Season 2 released for the game, and despite not everything being ironed out, people are, for the most part, having fun with it all at the moment. And that's what matters most. Today we'll talk about any ongoings in the background of the game, such as recent patch, any chatter from the devs, either reacting to how the season has gone so far, or even talking about future plans, anything popping up in the community in general, but I think I think I'm going to give a good portion of this to just share my thoughts properly on Season 2 now that I've had the time to have it settle in. Starting off with an actual game update, then we had Client Patch 1.2.0b hit a couple of nights ago. This was entirely just fixing some bugs, one of which being early delivery of BlizzCon rewards, one being the fix to the Season Pass Platinum reward, which makes it now 700 instead of 666. Still not overly generous, but it is at least a bit better, and that you can consistently get two out of three battle passes without actively paying, so an improvement for sure even if it is a small one. Then we also had an issue fixed where sometimes your actual name would show up when opening the friends menu, which of course is personal information with no reason to be displayed there, so that was fixed up as well. And then of course everyone's favorite, various stability improvements. With that out of the way then, there have been, let's, let's say, some interesting marketing moves from the Diablo 4 team, with a major one in particular being, well, a real life version of Blood Harvest. Specifically, anyone who lives in the United States and donates blood can show proof of said donation on a temporary website that the developers have set up, and as we reach certain thresholds and goals, the entire community of players for the game will receive the rewards that are listed. Currently we are at 20% of their main goal, at 33% we unlock some weapon cosmetics, at 66% we get a barbarian armor set, and at 100% we get a neat looking horse. So you know, donating blood is a good thing even regardless of this if you are willing and able to do so, so why not double up and also get yourself and the rest of the community some cosmetic rewards too I suppose. This definitely isn't something that I was expecting to pop up with Season 2, but hey, it's a nice gesture, and it thematically makes sense, so why not? Past that, we have a thing that I just want to make sure all players are aware of, which is that if you have Amazon Prime, you can just get four tier skips for the Battle Pass completely free. The requirement, of course, is that you do have Amazon Prime, but a pretty large number of people out there do have this already, and just don't have it connected to their gaming services, so this is basically just a quick PSA to say, hey, if you do already have Amazon Prime, this is a thing that you can take advantage of, and you may as well hook it all up to do so. Then we just have a number of tweets from various developers to go over as well. Starting off, we have this tweet from Ron Ferguson, the GM of all things Diablo, saying that he loves the ridiculous amount of gold you get from the Whispers of the Dead activity now, and a lot of people in the community have actually been a bit taken aback by the sheer amount of gold this does actually give now, with many people worried that the amount that we get now is a bug, afraid that it's going to get fixed and nerfed, just like this person here, who responds saying, it's intended then? And Joseph Pipiora responds saying, yes, it was talked about on the stream. And while yes, the developers did talk about this in the recent dev stream they did before Season 2 dropped, they did say that the Whispers of the Dead actual gold gain would be increased, I don't think any of us expected quite how massively the change would be done when it comes to gold from Whispers. Like, it is just such massive passive income now at this point that it makes gold farming just an irrelevant concept in Season 2. And while that is something that as a player I absolutely love, usually developers aren't overly willing to just remove an entire farm requirement from the game as a whole, so this is really nice to see. After that, we have someone asking Rod about the main story campaign for the game, and if there are any plans to increase the experience rewarded from interacting with it to make it actually comparable to other methods of early level gaining that you can get by, uh, you know, skipping the campaign. Essentially, this person just wants it to feel rewarding to choose to do the campaign again, and I actually totally respect that concept. It'd be nice to do the campaign again without feeling like you are slowing yourself down a ridiculous amount. That said, Rod responds to this saying not only does he agree, but he asks if this person has actually tried the campaign on this new patch in this new season, because both side quests and campaign rewards have actually been buffed a fair bit in Season 2 as far as experience, and he wanted to know what this person's thoughts were. As it turns out, they didn't try it, but it's really good to know that they are working towards a world, even if it is slowly, where doing the main campaign at the start of a season might actually be a viable choice to make, even for those who care about speed, you know, just to shake things up sometimes. Then we have a somewhat hard to understand tweet that was sent over to Joseph Pipiora. From what I can tell, this person is bringing up that certain season journey rewards rewards, and some battle pass rewards as well, are just not functioning properly or being delivered within the game, things like the horse not showing up at the stable, and I have encountered similar issues with Smoldering Ashes myself, where it says that I have collected them, but then I can't spend them. There's definitely some funkiness going on here in general with the actual retrieval of these things, and the response is that they are looking into it, and that it definitely is a bug, so they are aware of it at the very least, and they are looking to fix it all up. Then finally we have the return of an old issue with the Earth Strikers aspect for the Barbarian, this was recently changed 
change to specifically only have the guaranteed overpower from this aspect trigger to non-basic skills. But even though the tooltip was changed to represent this, it seems that it is still procking on basic skills, which of course heavily defeats the purpose, as getting a 1.5 times multiplier on a basic skill is generally a lot less valuable than on something like a Maximum Fury, Hammer of the Ancients instead. So I can see where this want is coming from, and Adam Jackson, the lead class designer for the game, says that they will investigate this, and thanks for the report. And that just about does it as far as the actual new stuff from the developer side of things, so now I just sort of want to talk a little bit quickly about the current state of the game and the current state of Season 2. Everyone that I've talked to, everyone that I've heard from, comments and everything, it seems like the vast majority of the people who actually have tried Diablo 4 again for Season 2 have been having a really good time with it, even up to this point. Of course, it isn't literally everyone, but considering how dead the game was looking and feeling early on in Season 1, with the whole train wreck of Patch 1.1 and everything like that, Season 2 has really sort of revitalized the game. It feels significantly better to play, again, not at all perfect, most people are comparing it to the base game being like an alpha for a finished game, and Season 2 now being the beta of that game, and that feels a little bit painfully accurate, but hey, it does definitely feel a lot better than it did, and the regrowing player base definitely shows that. As far as what has changed to make this happen then, I think one of the largest things genuinely is the way that the vampiric powers work in Season 2. Unlike the malignant hearts from before, this system is very focused on not limiting the player too much. With malignant hearts, you could only have one wrathful at a time, you could only have three hearts total, and the powers weren't at all made to synergize with each other, so much as just cover a wide array of different uses that they wanted you to stick together. In Season 2, our vampiric powers no longer have any class-specific functions, which mostly just acts to make the usable pool of powers a lot larger for everyone. There are various vampiric power combo synergies that can require two or three powers being used together, but have insanely effective results when used correctly, and you can use as many major powers as you want as long as you stay within the packed limit of your armor. Not only that, but where Season 1's Malignant Hearts were extremely RNG-reliant in every way possible, vampiric powers only actually have a small slice of RNG. By which I mean there is RNG, of course, but the rate at which you interact with it makes it feel like a non-factor. You can easily have all of your best vampiric powers at maximum level before you reach World Tier 4, which then gives you the freedom to play around with them and find fun combinations. Not to mention unlike in Season 1 where you needed jewelry to drop, with both the right affixes for you and also the right slot color to match your malignant hearts of choice, whereas Season 2 does have packs on armor, but they also have the ability to clear the pre-spawned packs that drop naturally and consumables that actually will apply specific packs that you want to the armor. And they also drop crazy frequently during Blood Harvest, which basically just removes the RNG requirement of that side of the system entirely. And so in the end, it just feels really good. There is minimal RNG, there's a lot of synergy, it's nice. Sure, say what you will about the changes to how damage numbers work, but I think the biggest thing that makes the game feel more enjoyable as a whole is simply the way that vampiric powers work compared to malignant hearts. And I hope they continue to make enjoyable season mechanics like this in the future as well. And that just about does it for today then everyone. Just a collection of news going on in the Diablo 4 community, and some of my thoughts on what's going on with Season 2 as of this current moment in time. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course feel free to leave your own opinions down in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye